Hey guys, and welcome back to another Java programming tutorial. So in today's video, we are going to be introducing object-oriented programming and talking about what objects are and getting a little bit into classes and methods. So I think the first thing to really talk about is what is an object? So an object essentially is just an instance of a certain data type. So we know we have data types like ints, strings, bools, scanners, like all kinds of different things that we can use, like array list, um, hash table, hash list, whatever, or hash map, all that stuff, okay? And those are all known as data types, right? Or classes, if you want to say that. So whenever we create an instance by doing something like this, like scanner sc equals new scanner, essentially what we're doing is uh, pointing this variable sc to an, a scanner object, okay? And whenever we create any kind of variables, like just typing like int x equals five, we're essentially saying x is equal to an int object of uh, value five, okay? And these objects are what allow us to have different properties for different data types. So you know how we can add integers together or how we can do like dot parse int on, um, on strings and we can have like a bunch of different methods and stuff. Those are all specific to the type of object that we're using. So for example, we can see here, I have this scanner object, right? So SC is equal to a new scanner object. And that's taking system dot in as an argument, okay? So we can only use this dot next method on SC because it is a scanner type. If I try to do X dot next, and I do a little semicolon here, you can see that we're getting uh, can't invoke next method on uh, primitive type int because well, that method doesn't exist for int, okay? Uh, and that's like a really basic way to kind of understand what objects are essentially whenever we're creating a new variable so like even just doing like string like uh, str equals hello what we're doing is we're saying well str is actually equal to a string object with the value hello and because of or based on the different types of objects we have different properties different attributes things we can do with them methods we can call uh, and that's just kind of important to understand you'll see more how we create like objects and whatnot that are specific um, to like classes that we're going to make in later videos. Okay. So it'll all start to come together, but just now kind of know that when I'm calling things objects, essentially that's like you have a variable of a certain type and it's equal to something you're creating an object of that type. Okay. That, that's all we kind of have to understand for now. So now let's talk about methods. So some of you may already understand what methods are because I think I went through a very brief like explanation of them in uh previous videos, but essentially methods are anything that you call on an object or on an instance of an object. So just to clarify what an instance is, when we're creating a variable like this of a new scanner object, we can say that we're creating SC is now an object, like a scanner object, or we can say SC is a new instance of a scanner, of like the type of scanner. And those kind of are interchangeable. So if I say instance instead of object, um, they're, they're very similar. Okay. So just bear with me on that. So anyways, when we call this dot next method, uh, we call it on the uh, like variable, right? So that's that's pointing to our scanner object. So our scanner object allows us to use this method. Again, I showed you before, if I tried to call that on, for example, uh, the variable X that was like an integer, that doesn't work because that object doesn't have that method associated with it. So a method is anything really that's just like a dot and then whatever the method name is and typically brackets. For example, if we had like uh, an array, like say we have, or let's do actually a string. So we're just gonna type another string, probably shouldn't have deleted all these, uh, but that's okay. Let's say string h equals hello. And I can do something like h dot at length. And this is a method that simply returns to us the length of the string. And again, this works on uh, our object, uh, which is a string, but it's not gonna work on our SC because well, what is the length of a scanner? So if I type that, you can see that we're getting this uh, red line here, and that's obviously not giving us anything because this length method is not defined for a scanner type. So that's kind of a bit about like how we call methods. And you guys have already seen a lot of different uh, examples of methods that we can use on different objects and different data types. Okay. And same thing when I say like data types and objects, data types are kind of like what the object is created off of. And you'll see that more in, in future videos. Just want to clarify in case anyone's kind of confused. Okay. So how can we create our own methods? Well, currently, since we don't really know anything about classes, we're going to be creating methods inside of this main class. Okay. Now this main class is uh, special because it is, it contains this method. And remember I was telling you guys at the beginning, this method automatically runs whenever we run the program. 
Well, that's different than other methods we're gonna have in classes we create in future videos, so it's a bit hard to explain this method per se, but this is a method uh, because a method is typically anything that sits inside of a class, and the class is what's gonna define like our data types. So scanner, uh, in Java, we can't see it right now, there's actually somewhere that says public class scanner, and inside of that scanner class, so if you do like brackets like this, it has a ton of different methods, a ton of different attributes um, that we can use by calling them from within this function, okay? So if we wanna create our own method within this main class, what we can do, and this is just the default way that we're gonna do it for now, I'm gonna show you why we use certain keywords and stuff in future videos, but it's a bit advanced right now. We're simply gonna type public static, okay? And then whatever uh, re return type we want, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, so in this case, I'm just gonna do void and then the name of our method. So in this case, I'm going to say like Tim. Okay. So we have a public static void Tim. It has zero parameters. Again, talk about that in a second. And then it's going to do something in here. In this case, I'm just going to say system dot out dot print ln. And we'll just say when you call that, it just says Tim like that. Okay. So what I've essentially done here is create a static method that we can call from anywhere within this class, okay? And actually outside of the class as well. So what we need to do to call this method from inside this class is we can literally just type the method name. So in this case, if I type Tim <clears throat> and I put a semicolon like that and we run the program, you see that we get, is it running? System that out. One second here, sorry. Okay, so I figured out why it wasn't working because we had this uh, sc.next coming in here. So I'm just gonna, comment that out for right now and we will run this one more time and you can see that we get Tim to the screen now I know I didn't really explain what this is or how this worked but essentially what I've done here is I've created kind of like a function okay and uh, it's known as a method but in other programming languages you might see this as a function and this void keyword what this means here is it returns nothing okay because in functions we can actually return values which I'm going to show or sorry functions methods we can return values which I'm going to show you in just a second so this stands for, we are going to not return anything, we're just gonna do something in here. So in this case, we're just printing something to the screen. All right, now we have Tim, and this is the name of our method. And that's what we call here to trigger this to run, right? So if I wanted to pass some information to Tim, so say I wanted to print uh, whatever string I passed to Tim. Well, what I would do in here is I would type string, and then let's just say str, like that. And now this means, that whenever we call this Tim method, we have to actually pass it one piece of information, and that piece of information has to be a string. Okay, so I'm gonna show you right here. So I type str, I put Tim, and I put uh, Tim in here like this, okay? And we run the program. Now we see we're printing out Tim. If I change this like with a bunch of M's, you can see if we run this, we're getting Tim. Now the way that this works uh, is this is called a parameter. So str is a parameter of type string. And that means that whenever we call uh, this function, we have to type in arguments. And what arguments are is what the parameter is going to be when we get to the uh, the method. So anything that goes in here in the call statement, which is what this is known as, where we're like triggering the method to run, is known as an argument. Okay, so Tim is an argument. When we call this, what's happening is we're passing Tim as str. So now it's saying like str equals Tim like that or whatever the string is, okay. And then we're simply going to print to the screen uh, whatever it is that we were passed. So in this case, Tim, right? Now we can actually do multiple uh, parameters as well. So if I wanted to do another parameter, I wanted to pass two pieces of information every time we call this function, I would say maybe int and x, okay? And now it means that I have to pass not only a string, but I have to pass an int. So that means we have to type an integer in here. In this case, I'm gonna do four. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna say four, and we'll say int i, and we'll say i is less than uh, x, and we'll say i plus plus. We're just going to print uh, this that many times, okay? So let's see here. Boom. Okay, so system.out.println. What are we getting here? Initialize variable. Ah, got to do that. Sorry. Okay, so now we pass an int, and we pass a string, and what we're going to do is simply print this as many times as, like, the int that we typed in, okay? 
So you can see that now we get Tim four times to the screen, um, and that's how that works. So we have arguments in here. The two arguments are Tim and four. And then we have our parameters, which are str and x. And when we pass our information in, str gets equal to Tim, and x gets equal to four. Okay, and then in here, we can now use those values by referencing str and x like I've done so, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Now, in terms of this public static, I'm gonna talk about this in the next video. For right now, all this means is that you can call this um, not on an instance of the class, which is kind of what we're doing here when we're just calling Tim, okay? Because we don't have any object that's like a class main, which you'll see in the next video, okay? So that's kind of how uh, we can create our own methods. Again, we can create methods that return things. So that's what I wanted to talk about now. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another method and I'm gonna say this is public static. And in this case, I wanna return an integer value to uh, whoever's calling this, okay? Or wherever this is being called. So I'm gonna type int, cause this is what I'm gonna return and the function's gonna give back to us or the method's gonna give back to us. And I'm gonna say add to as the name. And we're simply gonna take an integer x as our one uh, parameter here. Let's see what the issue is here. Method must return, yeah, okay. So you can see it's already giving us a red line saying that we have to return a value in this uh, method because we typed in the fact that we were gonna turn an int, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm simply going to return x plus two. And what this is doing now, semicolon, is it's just taking a value x and it's adding two to it and it's returning the value uh, to our uh, program, wherever we call it. So let's just do something up here and show you how this is working. So I'm going to say system dot out dot print ln. And here I'm simply going to type add two and then give it a number, in this case six. Now you can probably guess what this is going to give us, but essentially what's happening here is we're calling add two. We're giving it the value six. So our argument is six. It's coming in here and the parameter x is now set equal to six. We're going to return. So back to wherever we called this x plus two, in this case eight. So we get eight here as a value and we go boom and we bring it up here and now this little line is equal to eight. So we're gonna print eight to the screen. And you can see that we get eight as a value like that. Now obviously in uh, methods like this, you're probably gonna do some more advanced things than just adding two, but that shows you how we can return values. And I'll do one last example of returning maybe like a string value. So public static string. Okay, and we'll just say uh, str as their name because I don't really know what to do and we'll take a string x okay and then in here we have to return a string value so what we could do is we could return x plus and an exclamation point but I think I need to put that in double quotation marks like that so what we're doing now is we're adding an exclamation point to the end of our string and we're returning that so if I call uh, str here Okay, so we'll, I don't know why it keeps doing that with my brackets. We'll do str, and then inside our brackets, we'll give it hi. It should return to us hi with an exclamation point, and indeed it does. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of how uh, methods work, basically. And in our the next video, we're going to be talking about classes and creating our own kind of data types uh, and moving forward. And that's what we're going to continue to be doing with the rest of the tutorial series. So if you guys enjoyed the video and it helped you out, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,